I would describe harvest strategies as a set of predetermined rules that provide certainty for the future. Uh, people need and deserve, and fishing communities need and deserve that certainty. That kind of certainty is you get plenty of notice of changes. Uh, the changes, when they come, apply for up to three years. And in our case, the actual maximum the quota can decrease or increase is about 20%. Uh, the rules are quite clear. I think the important thing is there is a very a consultative process, industry has every opportunity to make their input. Uh, we're not going to get everything we want and neither will anybody else, but there is an agreed set of rules at the end of the day and that's the bottom line. People fear change in every business, that's, uh, and it's most, can, uh, most uh, radical, I guess, in fishing communities because they're, they're marginalised. Um, by a lot of systems. They're living in country towns, their whole family history has been about fishing. Uh, it's naturally that you, it's not only the employee who's concerned, it's the whole family, the whole network of people, businesses in, small businesses in the community. So you really need them to understand that this is not a black box. This is really a simple set of rules which they follow every day in their own business. These are those rules applied to fishing. <laughs> The major, major improvement that's come from harvest strategy is just stability. As a result, the Commission, which governs this fish, CCSPT, has been able to focus on compliance. That compliance has improved. So whichever way you look at it, the, the bottom line is that it's been a much more stable stock, a much more stable um, environment for investing, and a much more stable uh, environment for getting the best people onto boats, into processing and selling the product. It's been a win-win situation for everybody. The unexpected benefits to me, and I think most people, was that it enabled you to concentrate on making a better fishery and a better industry. Uh, previously, we'd spent millions of dollars a year on political uh, manoeuvring, uh, pre-manoeuvring on the science. Pre-harvest strategy, there's no doubt the stock was in real trouble. The fact is, it got down to a very low, almost calamity level, and something had to be done. The circuit breaker was the harvest strategy. Uh, applied to SBT uh, since then, it's got taken the stock from what is called about 4% of virgin or unfished biomass up to about 15% and headed for 20%, which is the sustainability level, very quickly. So, you know, it's been the major driving factor for recovering the stock. I think ICAT for Atlantic Bluefin that will be applied and developed fairly quickly. Not with the same rules because their situation is different. Pacific Bluefin's more difficult, but unless they do something very quickly, then uh, it could end up a total disaster. Um, I'm hearing the same arguments from those countries, those industries, those governments, those scientists in Pacific Bluefin as I heard 25 years ago in Southern Bluefin. And uh, the only advice I can ever give is just look at the history of other fisheries and how a harvest strategy has benefited those other fisheries. I live it every day. Uh, instead of spending three quarters of my day on, uh, with politicians or managers trying to influence them on uh, whether we got a higher or lower quota, whether the international organisation was working effectively, I now spend it on either promoting the product and just making a better product. Uh, it's very simple. Every business person knows that you spend more time on productive things each day, then you'll end up with a better business and, uh, in this case, a better fish stock. Thank you.